<clears throat> well, great. Thanks very much. Um, uh, my name is Grant McKenzie, as Kitty said. Uh, this is a project that sort of been on the back burner of mine for a long time and finally uh, seeing the light of day uh, called Privy2, uh, which is taking a uh, privacy preservation approach to location sharing. Um, and we brought it to my team here at McGill, and we've been playing around with this for a little while. Uh, the motivation for this is there's a lot of applications out there that look at uh, sharing your location with others like Google Maps, uh, Facebook check-ins, Instagram location share, Swarm, uh, not to mention Snapchat, and TikTok, and, and WhatsApp, and various other applications for actually sharing your location. The difficulty is, is that many of these applications actually fall short in how they share this information. They make this assumption that our relationships between individuals are all the same. And the level of information I want to share with my mother is going to be the level of location information I want to share with my spouse or boss or colleague. Uh, we know that's not actually true. And so what we did was we put together a series of design goals for what would be important for developing a location sharing application with privacy preservation in mind. Uh, and these focus around three main topics. So encryption, uh, location obfuscation uh, or temporal obfuscation in this case as well. Uh, related to um, geomasking, and then uh, how you would actually share such a system. Uh, and have implemented that in a prototype we call uh, Privy2, which is what I want to talk about today uh, and get some input and feedback from people on. Um, the Privy2 application kind of looks like this. You can select uh, how you would like to obfuscate or geomask your location, as well as how you want to temporally obfuscate uh, your location there as well. You have a series of views depending on who the end user is going to be. So how you want to share this information, you can choose different people and what view of your location they're going to receive. You have a, a key that you can determine uh, is, is based on AES encryption that you can actually share with someone to unlock their specific view of your location. And then you can share and publish this uh, and so people can, can see, have access to this location. What it looks like on the back end when you actually decrypt it is depending on the key that you have, uh, you unlock a different level or different resolution of location as well as different resolution of time. So you see a public view, a friends or colleague view, or maybe a spouse or partner view. Uh, and this is going to vary uh, depending on the amount of information um, that you give people. So if you give them a unique key, uh, they can unlock this at different levels. And the idea is that there's one location, just put it to different buckets that have different keys to unlock different resolutions. Privy2.me is the name of the application. You're welcome to go check it out. Uh, give us your feedback. There's a prototype uh, mobile web application there that we're looking for some e impact. And we're developing the uh, the the native applications right now, as well as the, the web browser version. Um, this is my team uh, at McGill. Uh, thanks very much. That's it. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit like the, the, the solid approach. Um, the difficulty with some of this is that it doesn't actually allow you for the same levels of resolution that we're, we're um, investing in this. Um, it doesn't necessarily follow the same decentralized approach, like uh, the TL approach, uh, TPLs, I should say, um, but it does take a similar idea of having distributed location information. That's something actually I've been working um, or discussing recently with a colleague of ours, Ben Adams, on how to incorporate this into a secret platform, for instance.